Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, we're just waiting, waiting, waiting for everybody to join. It takes a few seconds. We have 25 people on tonight. Wow. Great, great turnout. Oh, good, good. Um, just going to give it a minute just in case anybody's late wrestling with, uh, with Zoom. For those that are joining, you will find that you're on mute for the time being, but uh, this is going to be quite an interactive session. Leslie's taken me through this already, so uh, uh, we'll take you off mute quite quickly and we'll... Please don't, feel, please don't be shy, because I think there's a bit, Leslie, that you want to ask people to get. I, to I want of, ideas from them, how they exactly. solve a problem, because, exactly, yeah. Yeah. you know. We'll come on to that in a sec. So just yeah, sure. Through, uh, sure. Another few seconds, just so that anybody... I, I need, I need um, biscuits of Dunkin' My Tea. Go on, then. You get your biscuits, Leslie, while I, I uh, get everybody online. I'm terrible. I, I, I have to dunk my biscuit. Okay. It's one minute past. So let, let's um, let's make a start. Give it, give it another. Let's make a start. So, guys, look, welcome. Glad everyone's glad we've got a good turnout. Twenty six people on now, so that's fantastic. Hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, another one of our Zoom sessions. Uh, uh, we're still doing our nets on Monday nights on the repeater GB three XP. Uh, I hear that's working okay last time, so that's good. And we're also holding our Zoom meetings on a Tuesday night as well, every week, so at 8 p.m. So uh, again, feel free to join us on that. Uh, so if you can't quite get into the repeater, that's another good way to, 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 to get involved. Um, so tonight we have Leslie with us, but before we move on to that, one quick oh, yeah. one quick uh, piece of news. You may have seen in my email that I sent out, it's the 75th anniversary this year of the, of the club's foundation. The very, very first meeting of the Sutton and Cheam Club was in on the 1st of October 1946 in Yoldi Red Lion Pub, which is still going in Cheam. So we're planning to meet up again on, on the 1st of October this year, which should be exactly 75 years about the very uh, after the very first meeting at 7 p.m. So uh, we'll be doing that. And if anyone's got any other ideas what we can do to, to, to celebrate the anniversary, please, uh, please get in touch. We might do a special event station or something like that as well. So, uh, so that'll be great. Okay, so uh, that out of the way, we've got Leslie with us tonight. Leslie Butterfields, G Zero CIB, who's waving at us there. Leslie's done a lot of work. He, he probably got an email this week about this RF assessment. We need all need to do as part of our license conditions shortly. Leslie's done a lot of work on this, and uh, I believe there was a. A, a very a very late breaking change in the rules or in the final version that came out this week so leslie's been hurriedly updating his slides and uh, we thank him for that so uh, just before we start just to let everybody know we are recording tonight's session so uh if you don't wish to be part of the recording please uh just perhaps don't put you put on your uh your camera and that sort of thing but uh leslie as i was saying before this is an interactive session so i'm now going to set it so if you need to you can unmute so that is done. So, Leslie, over to you. Thank you, Chris. And welcome, everybody. Um, as you can see, this is how to conduct uh, an RF assessment by myself, Leslie G0CIB. You've probably heard a lot about this subject already, uh, What's what's been going on. So, first thing is, why do we need to do this? Well, it is shortly to do become an Ofcom requirement for radio amateurs and other Spectrum users. Actually, as of the 18th of May, it is. It's now coming to force. Um, new document. I thought I'd finished uh, this presentation and then this dropped on my email um, on Tuesday evening, in which case I had to run around like crazy. I've just, just got a little message from Martin at the bottom and the, smart, and the message that Martin has sent is this, uh, make sure there's nothing incriminating in the background, Leslie. So <laughs> that's absolutely fine. Anyway, let's go back to this. Um, it's shortly to become an Ofcom requirement for radio amateurs and other Spectrum users. That's why we should do it. But what has been the response so far? We're doomed, we're doomed. Well. Exactly. And if, yeah, I see a few smiles there. And you've got to really look at some of the responses on the internet. And I just I just want to cringe. So what we're going to do is try and go through this as sensibly as we can. Um, and I've tried to update this, um, put this together so that people can try and understand what's going on. We're not doomed at all. 
And, and the reason is, the answer is no. The subject has been around in the hobby for at least 50 years. That's a fact with extensive research and basic principles already well established. I just let that sink in for a moment because that's absolutely true. Many countries already have a formal requirement for an RF assessment for radio amateurs and others have a far, far stricter regime in place. The UK, well, in the UK, it is within the terms of our present license. And there's a bit on page 21. However, there was no documented assessment required. And this is the bit that's really changing. It's all about documentation of your assessment. Let me put it another way, the holiday's over. So let's look at a, a basic radio system. Now I've simplified this as much as I could. Uh, let's, um, let's have a pointer option. What would I like? Oh, laser, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so we, we have, um, can everyone see my, my laser pointer there? Yes? Yes. Okay, so we have a, a simple transmitter. Let's call it a HF transit, uh, transmitter. And we have some cable loss, as we always do. And we have some antenna gain and we have the signal coming out. So we have a transmitter output power. We have our cable loss. Now, radio amateurs really need to know about their cable loss. Yeah, we need to know the type, the length. Um, don't worry, don't worry. I'm not going to go into log tables. And I remember those many years ago. I had my teacher at school inflicted upon us as a poor child. Um, all I would say is there a, is a fantastic website called M5BXB. And all you have to do is put what type of cable in and what, what length it is, and it comes up with the losses. So you don't need to work that out. Um, you need to know your antenna gain, and you need to know your conversion factors from effective radiated power to EIRP. Now, again, I've put a good website on a link to do that, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. This is just for general, general information at the moment. Now, if it's less, if that calculation is less than 10 watts EIRP, no assessment is required. Basically, go and have a beer. Job done. That's it. Let's look at the next scenario. Now, I have to say, I've picked two scenarios. There's actually a, a few different scenarios within the new document. So it's a case of seeing this document. You need to look at which scenario applies to you. So bearing in mind, I've just picked two. Next one, however, this station is 400 watts EIRP. Now I know straight away that an assessment is required. I don't even have to look at it. I know an assessment's required. And this was an example that Ofcom gave. And it basically said that we are allowed to take into account the duty factor of the equipment. You know that as the mode factor. You know, whether you're using FM, SSB, AM, there's a mode factor. And there's a transmit receive duty factor. In other words, the amount of time you talk against the time you receive. Um, when the equipment, where the equipment is not used continuously, it's not a broadcast station. You know, it's on, off, on, off. And the example they gave was 400 watts. EIR, uh, 400 watts EIRP times 50% times 50% is 100 watts. Everyone, everyone not if they got that so far. Okay, good. Now using the Ofcom spreadsheet, I'm just going to Ofcom spreadsheet that gives a separation distance of 3.19 meters. Where did we get that from? Now we do need a separation distance of greater than that. That's what you know, we need a separation distance of greater than 3.19 meters. And I've got to emphasize, this is an important thing. So let's go on to the next bit. This, and where I got it from is this is downloaded from Ofcom. I've put 100 watts EIRP in there. 
145 megahertz in there. And this is my answer here. This is downloaded from the Ofcom website. Now, one thing I should point out, this is it's upwards from, it's 10 megs upwards. It is not below 10 megs is in, is in progress. That's not done yet. So I know there's people work seven megs and, and 80 meters and all that stuff. Please hold your horses on that. I know it's in progress. Okay. So the question, ladies and gentlemen, I need a separation distance of greater than 3.19 meters. I want, I want that one figure to be there. How does this affect access by the general public? That's the first question. Whilst transmitting. And are there any practical solutions? Chris, can you unmute everyone, please? And I'd just like to oh. see what people think on how to solve so this. People can unmute themselves if they want to uh, make a comment. They should be able to anyway. Just let me double check that. Yes, people can unmute themselves. So, guys, anybody want to give any suggestions to Leslie as to how we could do that? Put the antenna four metres up in the air. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, <laughs> yes. Um, that would be one of my top ones straight away. You know, on this, uh, what's the programme? Um, yeah, where you've got so many choices come up. That's the top. Okay, so I've got the height of the antenna. Anybody else? Martin, you got any suggestions? Yeah, let me unmute. Yay. Well, sure. distance from the antenna. So Sorry? At the bottom of the garden. Yeah, you can move the antenna. Yeah. Restrict yeah, access. that's fine. Sorry? Restrict access. Correct. Absolutely right. And you can reduce power. <laughs> yes, that's... What happens when you reduce the power? You put out less power in the, in the, at the end of it, <laughs> less transmission, less RF. I guess yes. you've got that. Therefore, the separation distance is less. I guess. I, well, if if you change your power levels, which you're absolutely correct, then the separation distance goes down. Yeah. Right. Anybody else? Well, in the case of my two meter antenna, it's on the roof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm, that that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Anybody else? If you're operating in a field condition, put a barrier tape around that ensures that distance is maintained. Yes, tape around, that's a good one. Yeah. <coughs> Did uh, someone mention changing frequency? Going below the 10 meg threshold? <laughs> <laughs> just, just coming back on the comment that the antenna was uh, up on the roof. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily maintain the distance if somebody's in the bedrooms. No. No, but you don't transmit. When you are, you are, you are absolutely correct on that one. Mm. Um, what it is is you don't. Um, I'll, I'll, I will just show you something. Um, let me just get out of this at the moment. Let me just. Let me just. Um, right. This is from the Ofcom. Uh, website and, and take it into your point and, and I'm very glad that you've picked this one up he says calculating compliance distance does not itself demonstrate compliance right spectrum users need to ensure that no gen member the general public is within that distance so yes you're right you could have it in the roof but people still within that distance and you don't want that you, you are correct. You are correct on that, but that I would emphasise that it's about making sure that nobody is no member of the general public is within that distance. Okay, um, I think everybody has has covered all the main areas on that, so I'm not going to go any further uh, on that. So I'm going to go for the next one. Uh, now, the guidance documents from Ofcom has a flowchart. 
And what you need to do is you have to have a look at that flow chart and apply it to your setup and location. Take appropriate measures as you've all just put in and, and little ideas that you've had, they, they, they're good. Uh, take appropriate measures if required and, and you have to document it. I'm going to emphasize that you have to document it. So let's just go on to this one. This particular chap, um, M6LWO, he's operating at 10 watts, uh, 145 megahertz with a beam antenna at 17 meters height. Now the question is, and you will already know the answer to this, why is this really good? Because he's, there's not gonna be anybody within that compliance distance. You know, unless you've got people acting like cats on the roof, yeah, not a problem. Four meter distance, unless, you know, unless they're gonna start getting ladders and things like that, they're not going to. So that, not only has he, has he been very, very sensible with his power levels, but he's got it on a height, a very, very good height as well. And there's no public access, there's no public access to them. So that is very, very good. But he, sh he would obviously document that to show that that's what he's done. So it's, it's not a very complex thing. It's about using common sense. How, what can I do to, to comply with this? Okay. This is the flow chart. And as I've said, on the left-hand side, there's these various, various scenarios. Let, my, let me get my, um, uh, let me get, right, pointer, I like my pointer, let's, pointer options. Let's get my laser pointer back. Right, there's various options here. For example, you no longer use the radio equipment. No action required, end. Um, you're lot, uh, you do not transmit at powers higher than 10 watts EIR, EIP. No action required. Done. But then we go on to the next box, which is about um, does your equipment transmit at an average power? Now, I'm, I'm going to really emphasize that it's about your average power that's required at this stage. If it's less than the average power, you just keep a record, it's 10 watts EIRP averaged. If it's less than that, you keep a record, job done. That's it. And I can assure you there are circumstances where let's say you're running 50 watts and you can be below that, that threshold. And I will demonstrate that a little bit later. Let's suppose in where we go over that threshold and then we need to carry out an assessment. I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail of that. Again, the question was, are you able to ensure that members of the general public, emphasize it is members of the general public, workers come under a totally separate set of rules and regulations. Health and Safety Act, I think it's the 588, 2016, if I remember rightly. Um, so we're looking at general public. Okay. And these are the things that you've all been mentioned, right? Reduce power and re uh, reassess. Well, okay, this is to do with your transmitting time, move the antenna, warning signs, restrict access. This is everything you've, you've just mentioned. Now, if, if you're able to ensure that they cannot get closer, you keep a record and you should keep it with your license document. I know I'm a bit, a bit of an old fudgy daddy, but I keep things in my log. Actually, it says keep it with your license um, document, but there we go. Need to follow that precisely. This is the latest guidance document and it was issued on the 18th of May, which was Tuesday. So we were frantically went going around trying to put this together and make amendments accordingly. Other acceptable methods. Now, some people are a bit dogmatic about this and then there's, there's no reason to be. Um, 
also what I've done is I've done the headline parts. And what I'm saying is that the, there is other bits to read. Um, so if there's any trainee run polls of the Bailey, I'm, I'm sort of saying to you that there are other, there's other bits you need to read on here. So you can use, for example, other EMF calculators. The RSGB one, for instance. Now I've put one together. It's not a problem. You can do that. Um, you can follow the manufacturer's instructions. And I'm, I'm going to get a wry smile when I come onto that one. Um, using pre-assessed equipment configurations. Now, I, I was... Um, uh, how can I put it? I, I thought this was applicable to PMR people when I looked at it. And actually, it's not. What it is, is that instead of putting a, um, your station together and then doing an assessment, it, national societies put assessments together already. So you look at these assessments and then say, well, this is the, the national society has done all the hard work for me. If I use that assessment and set my equipment up the same way, it's going to comply. And that's how some of our European colleagues work. Anyway. Taking measurements, um, I haven't, I'd be perfectly honest, I haven't gone down that route um, because I, I think there's issues with it. Can it, can you do it? Yes. Do I think there's technical issues? Yes. Um, but like I said, my own take on it is I've not, I've not gone, gone down that route. And the other one that's just recently come out um, in the new document is you can take instructions from a third party expert, i.e. Uh, an industrial professional. Okay, let's look at the um, a typical instruction manuals. And, and this one, I know, I know a lot of people have got the ICOM 7300 because it's a fantastic radio. It's got bells and whistles and you all love and, and you know, that's what you're really interested in. However, it's in the manual um, it's a 72 page manual um, and the guidance for installation guidance is actually on page 71. So the question I sort of say is, well, how many people actually get to read it? I see it's got a few smiles already. So <laughs> anyway, inside that um, manual, there's a thing called the OET six bulletin number 65, which is August 1997. Now it's very American based. Um, however, the, the principles within that book are still, they're still very good. The, it's in the process of being updated, um, but the principles, some of the principles in that are in, in, in the new Ofcom document, you know, exactly the same. Anyway, sorry, not exactly the same. Should we say the same principles? Um, anyway, guidance within the manual. See the installation notes. And this is within the ICOM 7300 manual. Um, it talks about the OET65, which you've mentioned. And it talks about clearances. What are the clearances? Separation distances. Um, so let's say let's say we're running 100 watts so our vertical clearance according to this would be five meters okay i personally my own personal view is where i got a figure is a lower so it's two meters there i would put a line through that and choose five meters because i know i can't be wrong it, it's safer doing it that way anyway um, going back up, again, surprise, surprise, it talks about um, our duty cycles, our transmission duty cycles, uh, and our mode duty cycles. Similarly, tops of SSB, CW, AM have a lower average output. Very, very important. My own homebrew spreadsheet, I've, I've been working on this. This is one I've been working on. And if you look, frequency, watts, cable, cable loss factors, antenna gain factors, mode duty factors, transmit, receive duty factors, and importantly, mast height. Bearing in mind that two main factors for this are that are within your control, 
you know, is power, how much power you're running and the height of your mast. So if you've got a low antenna, you, you really do need to, if you've got a lower antenna, you really do need to, to low that power right down. You know, don't, don't run high power low, because that's, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to show you why in a moment. So let me just come out of this. Let me just come out of this and show you exactly what I mean. Right, so this is my one. This, this is what I've been working on and their frequency input. So I'm going to put a, a power of 400 watts. Everyone see that? Or do you want me to increase the size? Okay, 400 okay, watts. Okay there, uh, Leslie, yeah. Right, okay, cable loss, uh, antenna gain factor, I'm gonna keep all those the same and I'm going to, I'm gonna put it at half a meter on the ground. <sighs> it's horrible, don't do this. And I'll go to, the, go to my results tab, bush. Yeah, tells me straight away, and I know that's a 28 volt limit. So what I need to do is I need to increase that. And at 400 watts, my results. Yes, that's right. That shows the importance of height in the calculation. The other ones I've got is, uh, Chris has been sent all the technical information here to, to show you your ICNRP guidelines, uh, calculators, where you get them from, your, your coax lens. Um, th that's all there and has been sent to Chris. So if you really, really want a technical minefield, feel free. So what, so, what, what I'll do, Leslie, I'll send out your links and your spreadsheets, everything you sent me out to all the guys on the call after the call. Once we've yep. got the video done, I'll send it all out to you in one go so everyone's got everything. Okay, so let's let's go back to where we were from the current slide. So everyone's seen what I've what I've been playing with. So, and from this, I put together an assessment. You don't have to do it this way. This is just the way I've done it. Um, so I've laid out the station consists of the following: exactly what equipment I'm using. Uh, what my assumptions are, what my antenna is. Now the important bit comes to here and I'll put my mast height. Ofcom will look for, have I looked at the separation distance? No touch hazards exist. You don't want any touch hazards. You don't want anybody coming up and being able to touch it. Um, no access to the general public without site manager's authorization. I, I know I can see people going, but this this is what they require. Okay, what you do to yourself doesn't matter, but you you've got some. It's all about look, looking after the general public, and and I've also calculated an averaged value for this, and at ten meters. I calculated at approximately the field strength at 2.4 volts per meter. Can anybody guess what the limit is? It's 28 volts. So I've, I've shown that not only have I, I done what they've asked for in terms of looking at the separation distance, um, in terms of how we look at the general public access, but I've also made sure that at my limits are way, way down. So I'm just going to take that back uh, from the current slide. Now, looking at all that information, I know, I've, I know I've overloaded people a little bit, but what we come down to is this one from the RSGB, and I've just got to mention Dr. John Rogers M0JAV from the RSGB EMC committee because I think they've done, I think they've done a fantastic job on this. Um, it's insert the basic information as shown. So your name, call sign, radio, model, date of assessment, etc. Select from the drop down menus. Okay, now I'm, I'm actually going to go through this. Then you take appropriate practical measures like we mentioned before, what practical measures do I need to take? 
you print it this off and you file it job done have a beer <laughs> yeah um and everything we've we've been speaking about has really come down to this one page and you can actually see where they're coming from there's the transmitter there's the there's the mode factors we've been talking about there's the transmit ratio uh, transmit receive ratio there's the cable loss and i did say you didn't you didn't need to use log tables this thing does it all for you um then you can choose your whatever antenna you like yes now i'm going to go just going to leave that for the moment oh well, leslie yes i know you did it for me but i'm sure there are other people sitting in the audience if you get time yes talking about hf antennas and one thing and another yes some of, some of us operate mobile yes two bit of 70 sems yes well we ain't gonna have the height we will have potentially the separation we will have potential idiots who might grab our antennas while we're stationary all these things does that mean we're going to get screwed no, it means if they are, you work out your distance, and if they are anywhere near that distance, you shouldn't transmit. Okay. Sorry. Maybe, maybe as I say, it might be worth running through if you've got time at the end. Yeah, that there, there is something in the document, and I have seen it, is that the there's a thing on uh, multiple sites, and it it actually says that it may not be suitable for complex uh, setups in in vehicles. And Leslie, we had a question in the chat window about near field assessment. Can you just explain that term? Okay. Right. Near field assessment. Do you want me to go back? If it helps, why not? Okay. I will come back to the RSGB one for the moment. Right. So, just, okay. Let me, um, near field. Okay. What it is, is in the near field, and there's an equation which I can't recall at the moment, the waves are not perfect. They're doing that. They combine with each other, yeah? So you're, you can't go in and measure them. So you, you, you'll get peaks. You'll, pick, you'll get peaks of values, and that happens in the near field. I, I think I've got a picture of that somewhere. Uh, and I'll see if I can dig it out. Um, there's been a lot of debate on on how you should what how you should deal with those peaks. Now, if you look in ICNERP 2020, Table Five, Note Four and Five, there's a note, and that note says for frequencies 1.9 to 30 megahertz. Near field, far field distinctions are deemed to comply as values calculated. As values calculated, do not exceed reference values. Yeah, so that is what is I have I have used to get around that particular issue. So it means that if it's in a if it's in the amateur HF bands, then essentially it's it's compliant. It, it's it's if, the same values. if it's within those those values in the table, you're fine. But that's in Igna 2020. Now there's there's um, should we say inconsistencies between those two? There's 1998, there's 1998 and 2020, and there's inconsistencies between those two documents, and that's one of the inconsistencies. Does that make sense? I think it does to me. Yeah. Yeah. Now I will just see. I will come back. I will, I will see if I can get a diagram on near field for you because I am sure that I do have one. So where were we? Where were we? Oh, yeah, we, we were in the RSGB one. So let's... Um... Okay, can everybody see that? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so we, we've filled out all our data. Um, we've put 50 watts in. So I'll, I'll just sort of change it so you can see. Um, see, I can change. Yeah. So I want this for this particular example for SSB. I'm running 50 watts power. 
And because I'm running 50 watts, it's the, it gives me a mode factor of 20%. I've used, I'm using a duty cycle of 50%. I'm going to give you a really big hint on choosing your duty cycles because it does affect the outcome. Cable loss, you can choose your cable, whatever you want. Yeah, West Flex. Don't need to use tables. It's all there. Um, and you can choose. I can't quite get into the menu on this one, um, but you can choose uh, your different type of antenna. Now, one thing that people need, need to look at is it says that on this particular example, that your average EIRP is 6.7 watts. Surprise, surprise, it comes up at compliant. So you, all you have to do is print this off. Done, job done. So you're running 50 watts, but your average EIRP is below the 10 watts average. That's very, very important on this. So if you start running 100 watts, ah, okay, now we now go down to the bottom and it also gives us our compliances distances as well. It also sort of says the thing I mentioned earlier about a minimum separation of two, minute, two meters to minimize uh, touch risk. I did say that was important. Um, and, it, and it shows you the, the Ofcom distance, compliance distance here. It's, it's not, if, if you went through this on a Friday night, right, I could go through it with, with a cup of coffee with you. And you'll go through it the first time, take about 10, 15 minutes. Once you know how to do this, and I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend just playing with the values, seeing what you can do, um, you know, what happens when I change this? Because you can't do any damage to it. Just play about with it and, and see what your results are. Uh, like I said, any queries, please contact m0jav at rsgb.org.uk. And I'm sure he, he will be delighted. Um, they've also taken, they've also looked at it in terms of horizontal and uh, vertical separation, which that's fine. They're absolutely fine. Um, I can't think of anything else to add on it. Yes, yeah, sorry. Can I just, uh, sorry to, to, to butt in. But just before you move on, um, I've actually been filling up that form today. I did it uh, previously about a month ago. And yep. now because they've adjusted it, I thought I'd have another go this afternoon because... Yes. You're, you know, you, I, I knew you were going to come on and give us this wonderful presentation. <laughs> um, so I thought, I'll give it a go and see what I come up with. Um, there's, a, there's a query in my mind. I mean, I don't know if this is intentional on your part. Um, you've been talking here this evening about, for example, where it says transmit linear power. You put 100 watts in there now. There was 50 watts in there before. Um, my, I filled this up on the basis that I rarely use 100 watts. Yes, but my radio is capable of it. So Correct. what I've done is literally put 100 watts in there on the basis that Mr. Ofcom comes to my door and says, how can you prove that you don't use 100 watts? Okay, you could look at my log. Um, but ignoring that, um, I thought, well, let's go to the extreme end and put 100 watts in there, which, of course, like you've just proven, it, it changes everything considerably. Yes. Um, as it happens, it actually didn't make any difference. I still had a green box at the bottom there. It came up green, 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 green. So uh, I would say to the audience, don't worry too much about that because you're probably fine if the height is correct, as you were saying. Um, it actually still gives you the green results. Right. Now, I have one problem, however. There's a slightly different question. If you go to that box at the bottom, if you can just move it up a little bit. Sure. Oh, no, that's right. You see the box at the bottom there? It says horizontal separation, zero, zero. Yes. Now, I have, for my VHF, I have a vertical dipole for VHF um, two meters in my loft. Yes. And that says there, horizontal separation, zero, zero. Am I misreading this in understanding that they're saying that you can walk straight up to your antenna and not be irradiated? Because that makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. 
Um, um, especially on the basis that if you take, you've got up the top there, you've got half wave. If you put in vertical uh, antenna in there, vit vertical dipole, yeah. uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, which I might well be, but a vertical dipole surely sends out uh, the uh, radiation in a horizontal direction. But verticals, verticals are an issue. Right. OK. Ah, I've hit an. OK. So I've hit a point here because I was thinking yeah. I could go up into my loft or my wife could because uh, we store things up there and I could be transmitting. I'd know if she was up there in fairness, but she could be standing right next to that antenna. And it says there horizontal zero. And there's no way. No, that that's when, gonna no, be when, when you when you click to it, 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 this little box comes up. Ah, right. OK. Right. But you are right. Vertical antennas are an issue. Ah, all right. Okay. Okay. I would emphasize that because of the, the changes in, the, in this new document, that there will be changes in the spreadsheets. Right. So, though, so this, this may not be the final version going out there. And all, I'm going to emphasize as well that this one is also 10 megs and above. Um, yeah. it, I'm, I'm confident that they will sort the issue out. Okay. Um, where was I? Okay, we've done we've done the RSGB one. Look, guys, this this is once you look and play with this, it becomes a lot lot easier. So let me just go back to my presentation where I was on the current slide. So you insert the basic information. Yep, all got that. Drop uh, select from the drop down menus which I've mentioned. Uh, take appropriate measures if you have to, print off and file, job done. Now, I also got to mention that they, there is um, a video on YouTube from the RSGB on exactly how to use this. So I've just, I've just gone over it very, very quickly. So let's just, next one from the current slide. In general, it's all about Good radio housekeeping, doing things properly, as you all do, yeah? Documenting the information as required. I've got to emphasize that's, the, that's a very, very important thing. You, you can either take several views on this. The, the first view is, no, I'm not going to do that, all that nonsense. Good luck to you. Or if you attempt to do an assessment and do your very best you can, you know, just put it away. And if something ever crops up and they knock on your door and you can say, well, this is what I've done, they, you're, you're in a much better position. This is where I'm trying to get people. I'm trying to get in that position. Yeah. Now, okay. Um, Documented information is required. And, imp and importantly, diplomacy with the neighbours will go a long way to keeping Ofcom happy. Now, the last thing, just to make sure that everything has sunk in, which I'm, I'm, I hope it has. I hope it has. Um, this is a, a setup from a camp. Um, we had, I've got a vertical antenna, which you mentioned earlier. Can somebody tell me what's wrong with that so far? They haven't raised the mast yet. Yeah. What what what's missing? Lots of things. I think it's missing something around the guy lines at the bottom to start with. Yeah, they, there's, the there's, okay. But there, I think basically it's just not high enough, is it? It's just not high enough, is it? Well, first of all, you, somebody can come up and touch it. Yeah. That's the obvious one. Yeah. Uh, there's no separation distance there at all. Yeah, none whatsoever. How, how can it be? It's, it's one meter off the ground. Now, this used to be standard practice many years ago. You wouldn't do this now. You, that's a 10 meter mast. Get it up in the air. 10 meters, you'll be absolutely fine. Yeah, we have three masts at our club. And the first thing I say is get it up in the air as high as you can. And then this problem just disappears. <laughs> Anyway, I've finished the presentation. I hope everyone's enjoyed it. Um, sort of gone through. I'd like to finish on that point. Uh, Chris, if you wouldn't mind, I'll stop recording some moment. Yeah. And then if there's any questions. Thank you very much.